Well, welcome and good morning. So glad to have you with us here at Calvary by the Sea on this 4th of July weekend. We remember all those who serve our country and those who protect our country, and we recognize you and acknowledge you and thank you for your service. Uh, a couple of things that I want to uh, remind us of that are coming up. Firstly, this Saturday, we're having uh, uh, something known as Ohana Hike, which is going to be a hike. We're gonna meet here, uh, dogs welcome, children welcome, everyone is welcome. Uh, we're gonna be meeting out in the front parking lot at 7 a.m. and then driving in um, and carpooling hopefully over to uh, Makapu Hike. And so if you wanna be part of that, that's happening this Saturday, early morning for all my early people. Uh, and then also a couple of Sundays from now, uh, July 17th, is invite a friend Sunday. So this is something that uh, perhaps is new to you, but uh, you know where I come from, we would invite a friend to church at least once a year. So I want you to start thinking about a friend, someone you know who might, you know, maybe it's a coworker, maybe it's someone in your neighborhood that you can say, hey, come to church with me this Sunday. The pastor asked me to invite somebody, so can you come and be with me? I hope you could do that and you can bring a friend. Uh, on that Sunday, we'll be giving away, um, yeah, what Zoe's doing there, one of those lays to all of our friends who visit. So please come, please have them uh, visit us on July 17th. Um, I should also say that if you're here for the first time, welcome uh, uh, here at Worship with us or online, you should be reminded that, um, that there are a few things that I always say because I think it's important to say them. And firstly, is that you're welcome. <clears throat> Secondly, is that you're loved. Um, and thirdly, that you're safe. Uh, and then also that you would know that God is well pleased with you. So important. That we have a benevolent God that is for us and not against us. That is with us and not away from us. May we always be reminded of that truth. Uh, this morning, we start a new sermon series titled Sent. Now, when you hear that word, sent, what comes to mind? Now, we all have come from different churches and different traditions and spiritual uh, traditions, denominations. Um, some of us are longtime Lutherans. Some of us are new to the Lutheran church, wherever you came from. Um, what do you think of when you think of the word sent? What have you thought of it to be? And perhaps, what do you think it is today? What does it mean to be sent today in our time? So, you didn't know you were going to do this, but you're going to find someone around you to sit with them. And for about five minutes, spend some time and share with them what you think sent means to you. So, can you look for someone? Find four or five people around you that you can make a little group out of. Introduce yourself, obviously, if you don't know someone. Introduce yourself. Everybody's nice. What does scent mean? What does scent mean? What does scent mean to you? What does scent mean to you? You share that. What it means to you, scent.
wind down those I know we could spend all day talking to one another um, but let's get back into this space I'm her I'm glad we were able to share with one another what we feel and sense is is the meaning of being sent uh, today's wisdom derives from Luke's gospel and I've titled today's sermon where are all the preachers at? Question mark. We read about Jesus' calling of more than 70 disciples, more than the original 12. Or shall we call them preachers, laborers? Because there are clear instructions that are given to these new preachers. They are to go out in pairs. They are to travel light, carrying nothing, not even money. They are to eat what is placed in front of them. They are to center themselves on a task. And they must be aware that they are traveling into danger. Did you hear? Like lambs in the midst of wolves. And they are to proclaim the kingdom of God is near. Now, this term. The kingdom of God. It's something that I want to speak about more because it's so subtle and yet the meaning is so profound that to the whole narrative of Jesus. So we cannot simply glance over it, and, but we need to give it some necessary attention. So let me give you a broader understanding of this term. The word kingdom in the Greek, basileia. Everyone say basileia which means the rule of God, the dominion and kingship of God. So it can be said that Basileia is this kingdom, this space that is here and there and everywhere, that it's also a practice of healing, of reconciliation, of justice, and of love. Did you hear me? Okay. I want to make sure you capture that. Because this is to say that the kingdom of God is not static, but it is active. So these preachers were being sent out by Jesus to proclaim that the kingdom of God, that the Basileia of God is near. That this space, this practice of healing, of reconciliation, of justice and love has arrived. But do you understand the ramifications of such a message. Because right here is where I think the wisdom enters the room. Here is where I sense that we call upon the Holy Trinity, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, that we call upon the Holy Spirit to guide us, to speak to us, to lead us, to uh, comfort us, to counsel us, to help us understand what this wisdom of being sent is meant for our time today in 2022. Because I do hope you realize that being sent today is quite different in many ways. But today's wisdom is for all those who consider themselves followers of Jesus. If that's you, listen up. Today's wisdom is for all the preachers, the laborers, the evangelists, those who are ready to step up and say yes to the call of God for the sake of the world. And yes, you heard me right, for the sake of the world. Are we paying attention to what's happening in our world? Are we walking around with our eyes and hearts open seeing the things that are happening in our times. 
and in our country specifically. So the wisdom is this, that the embodiment of God's basileia, of God's kingdom, is the people of God. I'll say it again, that the embodiment of God's kingdom is the people of God. It is the church. It is us. It is the American Christian church. It is the global church, the universal and Catholic church. But let me say something about the American Christian church specifically this morning. Because I was thinking about it this week, that someone needs to start a religion that follows the true teachings of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Did you hear me? Someone needs to start a religion based on the true teachings of Jesus Christ. Because in these times, when I think of the American Christian Church and much of evangelicalism, Pentecostalism, Catholicism, as many people know it, it seems to me that it's been hijacked, that it's been coerced, that it's been politicized, that it's, it's enslaved itself to the dominant culture, to materialism, to capitalism, to consumerism, to racism, to hyper-individualism, and yet the church to me looks like it's ill, very sick, and oh so blind. Dirty, and it doesn't even realize it. I say that because it's incongruent with the Holy Scriptures, because when I see the true teachings of Jesus Christ, frankly, it is so contrasting and different that I say, is this even the same thing? And I say this today in hopes of waking us up, in hopes of waking up the American Christian Church on this 4th of July weekend. If we are to be the embodiment of God's kingdom for the sake of the world, then we need to wake up. We are the called preachers. We are the called laborers. This is not just a call or a responsibility for pastors or clergy or professionals, but the calling is for everyone who follows Jesus. You are being sent out to be the kingdom of God in this world. Now, I don't know if you realize this, though, that Jesus was crucified, killed, and murdered for proclaiming that same gospel, that same message. Yes, that the moment that Jesus spoke of God's love for those whom the people considered unlovable, he was rejected, he was asked to leave, he was asked to go away. When Jesus spoke up about the generous and expansive love of God for all people, where those on the fringes were brought to the center, when those who were last became first, when the least became great, the people of his day hated him for that murdered him for that. Do you see how the kingdom of God is in direct opposition to the kingdom of evil? Truly, we are being sent out into a world as lambs in the midst of wolves. But remember this, that we are sent for the sake of the world by the Lamb of God. And that our mission is to overcome the kingdom of evil with the kingdom of God. You see, I guess what I am submitting to you this morning is that our world needs healing, that our world needs reconciliation, that our world needs justice and love, and that perhaps all that is needed in 2022 is some straight-up preachers, some straight-up laborers, who will go out into this world to speak about God's expansive love and grace for everyone. You see, I haven't forgotten about the parents and families of the 19 children and two teachers who died to gun violence in Texas. And yet when I read about Jesus' teachings, they're all about nonviolence. I haven't forgotten about the families of the 53 migrants from Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador. Children, youth, and adults fleeing poverty, food insecurity, climate shock, violence from their countries. 
and no longer here because of unjust immigration laws, because of racist immigration laws. And yet Jesus' teachings are clear about welcoming the foreigner, the immigrant, and the stranger. It's not fitting. I think of the millions of women, young women, who are saddened by the Supreme Court overturning of Roe versus Wade, losing fundamental protection, a human right, where women can be forced by a state to do something that is deeply personal. And yet what I see about Jesus' teachings is that Jesus' teachings never coerce anyone into doing anything they don't want to do. Jesus never uses brute force. Jesus' teachings are not obligatory, but permissive, open, liberating. It's not fitting. So when you welcome those that are not welcome by society, you are being the basilea of God. When you share bread with the hungry, you are being the basilea of God. When you are compassionate towards the afflicted, you are being the kingdom of God. When you love the gay couple, the trans person, the person of color, the immigrant, the indigenous person, the young child, the college student, the village elder, the common folk, the illiterate folk, the person who does not speak English, the person who does not understand all of our theological and big philosophical words, then you are being the kingdom of God. You know, there's something about those people groups I mentioned. They have this clear experience as to what the gospel is. Somehow, they show us the kingdom of God when we see them. And I guess what I'm asking of you this morning is how are you embodying the kingdom of God for those around you? Because sadly, too many people have put earth ahead of heaven. Somehow earth has blocked out heaven. Somehow earth has eclipsed heaven. And they have chosen the earthly instead of the heavenly already. But see, I'm certain that Jesus' teachings are about freely choosing to join a flow and not about being coerced or forced into a flow. And into this reality, we are sent into this world today. See, I was taught, Moses, you're sent to go convert people, to go save people, to go win people. But then I realized God is already doing that. Instead, perhaps the scent is to be the embodiment of the kingdom of God in this world, to be embodied with God's love for the world, to be healing, to be reconciliation, to be justice, to be love for this world, to announce that God's love is for those who the world considers unlovable. But I have to say something about that message. Some will not welcome such a message. Some will leave your church because of that message. Some will criticize you because of that message. They will send you hate mail and hate email and hateful letters. They will call you no longer a Christian, no longer a follower of Jesus. And you will be called all kinds of things. But as preachers, we travel light. We travel in pairs, focused with courage, with boldness, with determination to prophetically preach God's expansive love for all people. Jesus is the greatest preacher of all time. The cosmic hope and salvation of the world died on the cross, took our shame, our failure, mistakes, transgressions, and gives us his forgiveness and his successes and his righteousness. And he resurrected on the third day, giving us the greatest statement of reality, the final chapter of reality, the omega point of history, giving us liberation and salvation. But what is one to do with such liberation and such salvation today? Perhaps the only authentic response for us 
is to go out into this world and to be the kingdom of God. To be healing, reconciliation, justice, and love for the sake of the world. And that love needs to have a face. Is that love your neighbor, your co-worker, your, your family member, the person that you don't agree with on many things? Is it, is it the community around you? Is it the people you encounter each day at work? Who is that face of that love? Who are you being kingdom of God to? As we are here to announce God's love is for the unlovable of this world. We are here to announce that God's love is expansive and includes everyone. And when I think of that, when I think of that message, well, that message makes me smile. In fact, it makes me laugh. It makes me want to sing. It makes me want to shout. Because something like that, now that, to that, I want to be sent. Word of God and word of life. And we all say together, thanks be to God. Pray with me this morning, please.